Okay, we are going to transfer a pattern onto a bisque tile. This is like a uh, five by eight tile. I've applied my pattern to the tissue paper. So I took my pattern that I have here, laid the tissue paper over it, traced with a pencil, and now I'm ready to transfer that to my bisque. So I'm gonna center it on the bisque. I have even amount of spacings above on the side. And this is a um, Stadler Tri Plus fine liner. It has a point like a Sharpie. Okay, so with the marker, this is a water based marker. Uh, it will burn off in the kiln. So slowly trace that line and then you can see it's coming through. You don't need a really solid strong line, you just need to know where your pattern is. So don't uh, think you have to have an exact solid line. So you'll just trace over the whole thing. The slower you go, uh, the more of the marker will bleed through the tissue and give you more of an outline. Okay, you can always come back and use the watercolor marker to go over this if you think you need it brighter. Okay, um, if you're using a Sharpie marker, a lot of people like to use that. It can repel your products because you're trapping it most of the time between the bisque and the glaze that you're putting over uh, your design. So my recommendations for bisque transfer of a pattern is to use a water-based marker and not the Sharpie so that you don't have to worry about having any issues uh, where it's going it to, basically as it burns off, it's pushing the color that's on top of it away and creating a white line in that area. Okay. And you can see I'm just kind of very loosely doing this. It's not... An exact science I just need to know approximately where my pattern is and like I said if you feel like you need to put some of those lines back in because maybe um, they're not as easy to see just so you make sure you know where your design is um, you could sketch onto your bisque with this marker and be just fine I'm just going to go over some of this so that it's a little bit darker so that you can see it at home. These markers can be found, um, there's different ones. There's uh, some that have like a felt tip uh, end to it, but this is a fine, fine, fine point, like a Sharpie marker. Uh, so check that out. Sometimes you can find them at Staples, your office supply stores, and um, you can order them online. DickBlick.com has them also, and if you sign up for their email newsletters, a lot of times they'll have them on sale, which is awesome because they're not cheap at all. Okay, all right, so now we have our pattern on, and let me uh, get my paints prepared and we'll start painting. Okay, we're gonna do the leaves that are in the background first. And I'm using uh, 161 green leaf color concentrate and 162 laurel green. I've got a number eight square shader. I'm gonna dampen it in my water. And then you want to blot out the moisture because you don't want it running all over, okay? 
you're going to, um, I always like to keep a sponge so that I can wipe off my brush if I need to. You're going to fully load with the light color and we're going to corner load with the dark. And what I'm doing is pressing the color into my brush, working it into the hairs against the side of the paint well. Keeping the writing of the brush towards you, you're going to corner load with the laurel, the darker color, and then you're going to come over here to your palette and quickly blend, flip it over, dark next to dark, and you can go back and usually the first time I do this, I load it twice. Quickly flip over, dark next to dark, and you're ready to go. I'm going to do the underneath one first. Okay, so I'm going to keep the dark to the center and the light to the outside, and we're going to do an M stroke or a wiggle stroke is what we're going to do. So press and lift, press and lift, press and lift, press and slide out. So that's half of your leaf. I'm going to turn it around. I'm going to recorner, blend, and I'm going to do it. You have to flip your brush over this time because you want the dark to the inside. And I'm going to kind of just tap it in here where I can't really get my brush down there because I want to, and then press and slide, press, press, and off to the chisel. Again, reload. If the dark gets too far across your brush, you'll have to rinse it and start over. And sometimes there's enough product here on your palette that you're good to go. Okay, so for the next one, I'm going to do one side and I'm going to push away from myself and the other side I'm going to pull to myself. Dark to the center. I'm going to kind of just tap that in around that petal and then start my stroke. Press and lift, press and lift, and slide off. So depending on how much pressure you put down will determine how large that stroke is. Your brush stroke is color, which is a, a fully load and corner load, and then the motion that you do, if you're wiggling or just pressing, and then um, color, pressure, and motion is your brush stroke. Flip your brush over, Press, 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 and slide. Once again, corner load each color. Blend those so they go across, dark to the middle. Okay, so we're going to start down here. Press and slide, press and slide, press and slide, press, press, and chisel off. So the inside of your brush follows that center vein. The outside of the brush follows and pivots around as it goes out to the point. Reload. Remember what goes on your brush last comes off your brush first. So the dark green is our uh, goes on last so it's going to you're going to get rid of more of it because you've got more of the lighter color in your brush. So I'm going to kind of just tap it in place, press and lift, press and lift, press and lift, press and slide. I don't like how that one went over, so I'm going to come back over here and just touch that up a little bit. Okay, corner load, blend, blend, dark to the center, press and lift, press, 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 and slide. Reload. Okay, so down here you've got just dark. There's no way to get the brush in there. Press and lift, press and lift, press and slide. Okay, these are a little bit smaller, so let's do these without any wiggle. We'll just do um, just a press and slide. Press, slide, and come off. Now, if you had a larger brush, or if you press down harder, you can do it in one stroke. But if not, you can always do it with two strokes. I'm going to blend this out just a little bit. Reload. Okay, so let's try to do this one with one. So I'm going to actually start here, press, pull, and lift off. 
as long as it's similar in shape, I'm not worried about the exact shape of it. And here we can do the same. We can actually um, tap that in place, press, and slide off this direction. Now, if you wanted um, some extra little uh, leaves, like shadow leaves in the background, you can do that also. So let's say that I want, um, and we'll just do it with just the green, the lighter green, green leaf. So maybe you want a little leaf up here. Maybe one here. And I'm just using what's on that brush. But you can see how they're just a little shadow. Um, if you want them to have a stem, you can. You can just pull uh, with your chisel edge. create that illusion. Constantly turn your work as you're moving because you need to be able to do that. Okay, now what I'm going to do is show you how to do a wash background. So you start out with water in your paint well. Distilled water is always better if you have it. And what I'm going to do is take some of this Orchid Bloom. This is Color Stroke 638 Orchid Bloom. We're also going to be working with um, excuse me, 637 Bright Purple in just a bit. So first of all, just take a couple of scoops with your semi brush. Anytime you're making a wash, you want to start out with water, add the color to the water, keep it stirred up as you go. And then with your semi brush, you can just kind of slip slap, mush mush, I call it. You're just kind of moving that brush around in different directions. You're not lifting it off of the piece, because if you lift it off, what's going to happen is you're going to get what I call little rabbit tracks or footprints of your brush. Okay, so you're just going to go in. You could have done this beforehand. This was an afterthought. Um, I like to work from both edges. We will come down the sides also. So this is just going to make a soft watercolor background. You can do this um, with your concentrates also. I'm using the color strokes on this particular color because we don't have this color in the concentrates. If you were doing it with the concentrates, what you would need to do is um, add the gloss medium to the concentrate, equal parts, 50-50, and then create your wash. Uh, what the medium does for the product, the keyword is medium. In the toll world, uh, when you add a medium to something, it's an extender, an opener. It allows it to dry so slower so that you can manipulate and move it around or blend it or do this type of a, a background. You could actually use any of our mediums to do your background mixed with your concentrate. The color strokes have some of the designer glaze medium in it so that's what allows it to stay open a little bit longer and allows you to move and manipulate shade with it. So you can see it doesn't take long to do this. It's pretty easy. Uh, what I'm doing is keeping it stirred up in my paint well so that that color doesn't fall to the bottom. I just kind of mush it around, constantly changing the direction of my brush. Okay, so you've got a nice soft frame. Uh, if you were to use the concentrates like we did on the leaves, um, it would grab to the bisque right where you put it when it was thinned with the water. Um, it would basically stain the bisque where you put it. So that's why when you have 
either the color strokes or by adding the gloss medium to your concentrates it allows that to stay open longer so I'm just going to catch these edges real quick while I've got enough of a wash and I'm just double checking to make sure there's not any real lines if there is uh, that might have come over from the top I'm just kind of softening those so that you don't have so like this here I don't want to see that line where it overlapped onto the top this particular bisque that I'm using uh, is from Bisque Imports, I believe. And it's, like I said, just a, uh, what exactly? It is, uh, yeah, I would say a 6 by 8 is what they would, it's a little less than 6, but I think that's how they have it listed. Or you could slab your own, pour your own. Like I said, we're working on uh, 04 bisque okay so now you've got a nice watercolory uh, background we're going to do some other things later on that but that's how you create a watercolor background okay now using uh, 638 and 637 color strokes these have the medium in them, so they will stay open longer, allow me to blend. And we're going to start with the uh, Orchid Bloom, the light color. And we're going to put it on the uh, tips of the flowers. And I'm just going to kind of pat the color in. Halfway or so, constantly turn the piece. I'm not rinsing the brush. Actually, I'm going to put a little bit of that back in there. I'm going to tip into the darker color. And I'm going to tuck that color where I want it. So sit it down, sit it down, mush, mush, mush. Walk it to the right and walk it to the left. Walk by. You're going to kind of gently pull back as you're doing that so that it's a nice transition uh, from one color to the other. Get a light. That helps a little bit. Okay, so um, if you had a lot of product left on your brush, you could just gently wipe out on the uh, sponge there, go back into your light color, turn your piece, always tuck that color where you want it. So you're just pat, 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 halfway down, turn it around, pick up the dark color, tuck it in, sit it down, sit it down, mush, 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 walk it to the right, walk it to the left. Also going to kind of come up that one side that's behind the other one. I'm going to wipe out any excess, go back to the lighter color, and just kind of pat it in, tuck it around halfway. I've got quite a bit on my brush, so I'm going to just take a little bit off because it's like a partial petal. I don't need that much. Sit it down, sit it down. I do want some of this darker color to be where it goes underneath this other flower. Okay, wipe off. And I'm just wipe, wipe. That's all you need to do. You don't want to take the rest of it. More color left in your brush, it's going to allow it to blend easier. So again, there's a partial petal. Turn. see it here. Tuck that color in and just kind of bounce it around and it basically takes the dark color on the tip and it pushes it back to the light. Now I'm going to rinse quickly here, blot out all that moisture and I'm going to go up here and I'm just going to very carefully Grab that purple that I'm barely touching that that got onto the green just so that it's not there. Then I'm going to go down here and do this guy. Always work from the background forward. Light purple out on the tip. Pat, pat, pat. Need a little bit more. So I'm staying fairly upright 
with the handle of the brush and I'm allowing the bristles to bend and do the work for me. Okay, I'm going to put a little bit of that back in the brush and I'm going to tuck the dark color in, set it down, set it down, mush, 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 walk it to the right and walk it to the left and maybe come back a little ways to bring that darker color out. Wipe off the dark. So you're just going to keep repeating this for every single petal. Pat, pat. Remember your pattern is a guide. If you go out further than it, it's okay. Turn around. I'm going to grab a little bit more of the light in my brush. Sit it down, sit it down. Mush, mush, mush. Walk it to the left, walk it to the right, and go up behind. We're going to do some additional shading later, but that'll get some of that in and it'll allow you to see where each one of those petals are. Okay, so light color out on the outer edge where your highlight would be. Turn the piece. Grab your darker color and set it down, set it down, mush, mush, mush. Walk it to the right and walk it to the left. So I'm not, let me get a piece of paper. If you just do this, you get those little, what I call rabbit tracks, if you bounce around. But if you stay down and constantly kind of just barely, you're not even coming off of it. You're just working it back and forth so that you can blend those gradually back into each other. Okay. Wipe out that dark. And I also see a little bit of a halo of that purple there that I'm going to get rid of. Okay, you've got a little tiny partial petal here. So I'm just, it's mostly going to be the light color. But we do need to put a little bit of that dark in there because it is behind. Now, if you needed to switch to a different size brush, you could do so. I find that I use the small Sumi brush to do most of my um, painting. Okay, so let's go back to the lighter color. I'm gonna jump over here. Sit it down, sit it down. This is a larger petal, so you may have to grab more on your brush. Okay, grab that dark turn Tuck that dark color in, sit it down, sit it down, mush, mush, mush. Walk it to the right and walk it to the left. And you can really see it on the large one. Wipe off your dark, grab your light color. And of course this is gonna show up much more uh, after it's fired. These are all fired products. This is what we, um, call our color stroke which is a opaque underglaze made for bisque it can go on greenware uh, there are precautions and I have those listed uh, in our product manual that's online it's at the very bottom of the colors for earth website it says product manual and then you can print each page based upon the product that you're looking for and that's for our ceramics Okay, wipe off the excess, go back to the light, tuck that color in, about halfway to three-fourths at the most, put a little bit of that back in my brush, wiping out the excess, grabbing the dark, and you're always constantly, just like I'm doing, constantly turning the piece so that it's comfortable and you also want to always tuck that brush where it goes, where that color is going. If you don't, you can tell the difference. You'll have um, like a little footprint. So 
if you're like this it should blend and if you're trying to turn your brush and go backwards you're gonna have more of a line of little footprints there so keep that in mind constantly turn your work make it easy and it will make a difference on how that is shaded I promise you that you don't think so at first but I can look at your piece and say okay you did not turn your piece around when you were shading and then they say you're right I didn't I forgot so keep that in mind grab your dark color sit it down sit it down mush 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 walk it to the right walk it to the left grab more if you need to we're gonna go up behind that guy if you feel like you got too much you can always go back into the light turn it around you know by turning your piece and reapply we're gonna go over this a couple of times anyway uh, in order for it to be more solid and more opaque So generally it's two to three coats like this is what you're looking for. Okay, put some of that back in my brush, turn. You want to do one petal at a time, just like I'm showing you. Do not try to do three or four petals. Now on the little guys, you could get away with that. It will stay wet, but you need to work wet on wet. And the only way you can do that is by doing each one individually with all the colors. Now, I got out of my petal. I got further than I wanted. So what I'm doing is just took a clean brush that's damp and I'm pushing it, telling it to get back where it belongs, get back in the fence. Now I also took off a little bit of my background. So I need to come over here and make sure that I add that in and make sure that it's not noticeable where I'm doing that. So make sure that it's nice and loose and soft. Okay, so all of them have one coat. Now you'll go back and apply the second coat. So we need a little bit more of this. Make sure there's no water in your brush. Uh, we do have different sizes, like I said of the Sumi brush. This is the small that I'm using. We have a mini. Uh, this is the medium. Uh, for larger flowers, I would use the medium. Uh, for like little buds, you can use uh, the mini. But if you try to use that mini on here, you're going to see that footprint I was talking about. It will not be a soft, gradual uh, blend. So just go back over what you were doing. Let's, I'll, let me show you the two petals at a time. If you work fast enough, you can do like these two smaller petals at a time. But if you're slower, don't try to do that. Definitely do one at a time until you get the hang of it. Do it just like I showed you, one at a time. Now, I feel like I've got an awful lot of the light color on my brush, so I took some of that out. See, now you can see more of the dark. Okay. I also got just a hint on there. Now, another little trick uh, to keep track of how much, how, excuse me, how many coats you have. Um, let me show you something too. This one is out further than I want, so I'm taking a sable brush that's a little stiffer could even take a tack on and I'm just kind of pushing that back so you can either take and put a dot with your watercolor marker directly onto that not pushing it in because if you push it in it's going to actually leave an indentation or you could come out here and put one outside <coughs> of your petals and let me zoom in so that you can see that Okay. All right, so I just put a little dot on those petals there. Okay, so let's move on to these guys, making sure there's no water in your brush. Grab the light. I'm going to go ahead and do this little guy down here too a little bit. 
and then the dark. Turn your piece around. Sit it down, sit it down. Mush, mush, mush. Walk it to the right, walk it to the left. I'm going to blot some of that out. And quickly go get this one because you it's starting to dry. And you want to be able to manipulate it and move it. Okay, we're going to tuck that dark in for the shadow and kind of pounce it to blend that. Okay, wipe, wipe. We're going to come down here. So again, if you want to make sure that you remember, that's going to burn off, remember, it's not going to do anything to it. These are a little bit larger, so I think I'll stick with doing one at a time. Even after all this time, I still do that. Grab your dark. Go in behind. Sit it down, sit it down, mush, mush, mush. This is called uh, Sumi Shading. Wipe off your dark. Grab your light. Okay, turn around. I'm gonna take some of that off. Tuck that dark color in where it goes, where you want it to shade. Sit it down, sit it down, mush, mush, mush. Walk it to the right, walk it to the left. Wipe off the dark. I'm gonna put a dot here. So we know when we have one coat. So the dot means two coats. Turn around. Set it down, set it down, mush, mush, mush. Walk it to the right. Whoops, sorry. And walk it to the left. Okay. I'm gonna rinse that. Blot. And gently take that off of there. Okay, so let's indicate we have those and on to our larger petals. Okay, so pat that color in, letting the bristles bend down, do the work for you. Turn it around, grab the darker. You could do this with any color combination. Just two different values. Sit it down, sit it down, mush, mush, mush. Walk it to the right, walk it to the left, and up behind. Take out the excess. Put my little dot. Okay, I'm gonna come over here and do this guy. Quickly grab the darker color. Set it down, set it down, mush, mush, mush. Walk it to the right, walk it to the left. Grab a little bit more dark. And good, wipe off. Make a dot. Grab your color. Set it down, set it down but too much on my brush so I'm going to just take a little bit off grab that dark set it down set it down mush 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 walk it to the right and walk it to the left a little something on there there we go okay put your dot Wipe off the dark. Go back to your light color. Turn around. 
grab your dark tuck it in at the base where it's the darkest and then as you come back on the petal then you have less of the color in your brush and that allows you uh, to make it darker and then get softer wipe off the excess put my dot go back to the light color pat that color in on the very edge turn around tuck that color in wipe off the excess excuse me okay and we have our dot here so I know I started here everything has a dot around it so that is my um, two coats okay now something that you could have done you could have um, put a light blue wash uh, in the center if you wanted to uh, for like a sky just checking to see what that was it was almost like a little um, dot of color that splattered on there okay so let me zoom back out so you can see the whole thing okay let's All right. go ahead and start our third coat because I know I want these to be nice and solid okay you could let it dry a little bit longer if you wanted I'm gonna do two at a time on this little guy tuck that color in bring it back And I'm going to grab my mini Sumi and just use it to push some of that color back. Now your watercolor markers will bleed um, and show through as you can see. Uh, so you'll see those lines so don't freak out about them. Let's get this on here real quick before it dries. Wipe off the excess. I'm going to put two dots out there just so that I remember since they're so wet I'm not going to push it uh, put the marker down on the petal itself okay so wipe off your dark go back to your light and let's do these two Turn, go into your dark, set it down, set it down, mush, mush, mush. I got a little too much on my brush. I was seeing more of the light color than I was the dark. That's why I took some of that off. Okay. off the excess don't forget to mark so now I know that those have three coats all right let's go down here and do this guy again technically you should let um, the color two coats dry before you come in and do your third coat you'll be less apt to pulling the color off so you could go do something else or if you had another piece that you were working on you could work on it and let that dry you could also take a fan and dry it if you wanted to okay wipe 
wipe out that dark, pick up the light. Turn. Because when you have a whole bunch of petals or leaves, if you were doing leaves this way with two different greens, you can do it that way. Um, what happens is you lose track of where you're at because they all look the same. That's why that little trick of uh, putting the dot. And I believe uh, Jeanette McCall many years ago taught us that when she was in the ceramic industry. It's not something I came up with. Now you notice what happened is I wiped that off and it took away my dot. So I'm gonna put one over here so that I don't forget. Okay, wipe off your dark, pick up your light. Turn, probably making you dizzy, flipping this around. And tuck that dark color in, set it down, set it down, mush, mush, mush. Walk it to the right, walk it to the left. Wipe out the dark. Put your mark. And we're going to go to the large petals now. Mush in that light color. Turn, tuck in the dark. See how I'm just kind of bringing it back a little bit? That adds almost like a shading in a V shape to give you more uh, dimension. Okay, I'm going to put my two dots out there so that I can see it. If you clean up like I'm doing as you go, it's going to make it easier to clean up. Uh, the longer it sits there, it absorbs into the bisque. The bisque is porous, uh, so you need to be aware of that. Don't think you can just come back at the end and clean up. You could, it's just going to be harder to do. It's just so much easier to do it as you go in this case. Okay, tuck that color in. Sit it down, sit it down, mush, mush, mush. Walk it to the right and walk it to the left. And I'm going to go up behind that guy there. Wipe out the dark. Let's zoom in again. Put those dots on there. Let's even I lose track. Okay. Light color. Turn. Again, these are color strokes by Colors for Earth. Um, they come in multiple sizes. We have our two ounce and this is our eight ounce and then we do have pints also in gallons available. Okay, so don't forget to indicate that we're done with that guy. Wipe out our dark, grab our light. A lot of times I'll start there in the middle and then work myself to each side because it'll have less product on the brush towards the sides. Um, and that's okay, that's what we, we want. We want it to be lighter in the middle there. Sit it down, sit it down, mush, mush, mush. Walk it to the right, and walk it to the left. Blot out that excess dark. And I see a little spot that I wanna correct. When you're correcting, you need to wipe off that brush because whatever you're moving, you're just moving it around. You're not removing it if you don't keep your brush clean. And 
And some of that is the marker that I was thinking was the actual color. All right, uh, last one here, I think. Press it down, come around, turn, pick up our dark. And I just keep fussing with it till I get it like I want it. Uh, that looks pretty good. And you should be able to see um, the separation of the petals is what you're looking for. Um, let's put it like this so you can see it. Okay. And let me zoom in so you can see some of the darks. You can see each petal. We're going to come in and do um, some additional shading. All right, but we do have to wait until it's dry uh, to do that shading. So I will let this dry and I'll be back. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some additional shading. This is 132 Deep Cranberry. It's our color concentrates. These are pure pigment in a gel base. Um, so you have to shake them because they tend to congeal. So make sure you shake it really well. You can hear it moving before you try to dispense it. So um, it's, it's a stronger pigment. It doesn't have any of the glaze in it. So it's going to be a lot stronger as far as my shading. Okay, now what I want to do is show you how to Sumi shade. Let me back this camera off. Okay, so in your... Uh, water bowl you need to water load and you need to drag that off the edge of the dish four or five times turning the brush so that you get the nice point to it okay you can see that and then you're going to tip it into the color so you've just got a little bit on the tip and now again we're going to tuck that color in where we want it and I want this in the same place that that darker color was so sit it down, sit it down, mush, 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 walk it to the right, and walk it to the left. And just kind of keep fussing with it till it's a nice gradual blend. You don't want to see those little footprints that we were talking about. Rinse, drag multiple times. Uh, we can come down here and do this one. So tuck that in. Sit it down, sit it down, mush, mush, mush. Walk it to the right and walk it to the left. I've got enough water on here that I think I can do another petal. These Sumi brushes hold a lot of water and what you're seeing back here where it's damp is just water. Water's your friend. Okay, rinse. Drag that off. Tip into the color tuck that color in, sit it down, sit it down, mush, 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 walk it to the right and walk it to the left and you can come back slightly on the petal. It really depends on how much and where you want your shading. Drag off multiple times, tip into the concentrate, we're going to tuck this in behind there. So I don't lift the brush until I'm ready to rinse it and grab more color. Okay, so I've got a little bit of color on my brush. Tuck that color in. I'm about at a 45 degree angle with my brush handle. And especially when you're doing this one, you definitely need to start in the middle of the area that you're wanting to shade and then work right and work left because that way it's deeper here and it gets less product on your brush as you're going out from that area. Okay, I'm going to move this back out of the way. Constantly rinsing 
reloading, shaping that to a point before you reload. You can even go back in if you feel like you need more of that color. So this should be a gradual transition from one color to the other. Sit it down, sit it down, mush, mush, mush. Walk it to the right and walk it to the left. And sometimes, if you've noticed, right where I set it down, it gives a little bit of a footprint. And what I end up doing is just pushing a little harder on the bristles so that I can loosen that up so that it's not as strong. And it kind of fades that out. Rinse, drag off to a point. Tuck it in where you want it. Sit it down, sit it down. Mush, mush, mush. See how I've got that little footprint there? So I'm just going to kind of push on it a little bit and it goes away. All right, rinse. Drag off to a point. Grab my color. Turn my piece so that it's comfortable. Sit it down, sit it down. This goes behind that petal. We don't want it extremely dark, but I do want to see it. I've got enough water. I'm working on smaller petals. So I can come back over here on this one. And same thing. Set it down, set it down. Mush, mush, mush. So you're kind of making a V where you want your color. And then some of them go behind others uh, where they may come up behind a petal. So this one here is going to have. So we're going to tuck it in get that shading going and then I'm gonna go back and behind here remember that little petal is behind and I'm gonna grab a little bit more color and add some additional shading there okay so that's how you sumi shade uh, the sumi brushes are a black squirrel hair so they're in natural hair. So they're like the hair on your head. They're going to hold the moisture, the product, the water longer whoops, than other brushes and allow you to do this technique. Um, we have them on the website. You can buy them individually or you can buy a set. And I believe, uh, depending on when you're watching this, the sets may be on sale. Uh, just check them out. Just do a search in the search bar. Uh, for Sumi, S-U-M-I, and that should pop up the individual products that are available. And then you can select on each one and uh, do the size that you prefer. Okay, so the next thing that I want to do is take a liner brush and I'm going to add some additional detail. Okay, so now we're going to add some detail to these petals. Okay, so what I like to do, let me show you the palette first, is get my favorite liner out. And sometimes I'll even bring some of this out here. Grab just a little bit of water, a couple of brush loads of water where I can really pull the brush through that not sure what that is and that way I get it properly loaded okay all right so and you'll just and there's no sense of uh, thinning down the whole puddle because what happens is the water starts to evaporate and you end up having to do it again so just take out a small amount and what I'm going to do is just add um, additional veinings and I'll tilt this a little bit so you can see that so I'm going to add like these little stamens and then I like to take the tip of my brush and just kind of touch uh, what I call little tick marks. Um, you could do it with a 
a dotting tool or a stylus. Uh, I think it looks a little more natural when you do it. Make these different lengths. Don't have them all the same length. And that is so hard to get used to doing that. Because I used to have all mine the same. And again, just kind of had a few of those and it just really makes it pop, brings it to life, adds more dimension to that. Follow the shape of your petal. Don't go the opposite direction. You want to go the way that it grows. Nice little tiny fine lines. That also makes it darker down near the center because you've got a whole bunch of lines that you're adding and all gathered up creates more depth. Okay. That one's still a little damp. I'm going to go over to this other one because I want it to make sure that it sticks for sure. So you're going to do this on each petal. And you noticed I'm turning my work as I do it. Okay. Constantly reload. And you know what I did? Looky there. That actually is part of this petal. And I tried to make it part of that petal. So, let me show you how to correct that. That works out for you guys. Alright, so, well, I can make it. Or you can come in here and, uh, I think I've got too much of the shading. Alright, so we're just going to leave it. He's just going to be part of this petal. I'll just bring a couple of those up into there. Skip down here. Okay, let's go back over here. And when you're adding these, you have built up uh, three coats. Let's see, I started talking and then I messed that one up. So what I'm going to do is dampen my stiffer brush and try to gently lift a little bit of that off of there so that it's not so large. Okay, and then we've got a partial petal here. Now we need to go back over and do these two large ones. Um, as far as a liner brush, the 3600 series, 36000, and there's different sizes of that one out there. It is a um, sable brush, which is really good for detailing. Uh, this particular one that I have is an extremely old brush. And it is a Taclon brush, so you could do this with Taclon or uh, Sable as far as your detailing. It's really whatever your preference is. And we have some um, Taclon liners out there too that are uh, 455. And those are the class brushes for the glass painting, but they also work uh, for some detail also. Rinse that brush, blot it. purple that are on my leaves. And you can see this is all uh, fading here so it makes it kind of makes you wonder what it is but okay so done with that let's look at that closer on some of the areas kind of see that 
Okay, so now we need to do our centers. Um, I am going to push a little bit back, like this one here, and I'm just damp, damp brush. It's not full of water. I wet it and then I blotted on a paper towel, and I'm just pushing that very, very, very lightly back to give me a little bit more of an opening on that area there. I'm going to go back to my uh, Sumi brush. I'm going to use the mini, and this time we're going to use. Uh, 624 butterscotch. You can hear I'm shaking that up. Okay, 624 butterscotch. We won't need a whole lot of it. A little bit goes a long ways. And I'm just going to kind of pat that in the center there. And when you pat it in, or you could stipple it in, what you're doing is uh, applying the color heavier in some areas, light in some areas. Uh, so it will give you a little bit of dimension. Okay, so you'll, you can put two coats on, then you'll need to let that dry a little bit. And then we'll come in and put um, a third coat, but the third coat's going to have um, a touch of green with it. Okay, now I'm going to switch and use uh, the stubby brush so you can see it. Um, this is, um, it's a mongoose hair. Okay, can you see that? There you go. It is mongoose, meaning it's um, multi, it's different colors for one thing. It's a stiffer hair so that you can actually pounce with it and stipple with it. So what I'm gonna do is, um, I'm gonna put some of that yellow in my brush. I'm going to kind of beat it to death over here so that it has a nice fuzzy, whoops, sorry. And then I'm going to grab a little bit of the green and do it also. Because what you want to do is when you touch down, you should just what I call tickle. And that leaves almost like little individual dots. And you can pretty much load from that area. So we're just going to gently add some of that. Okay, let me bring that closer. Okay, just ever so lightly. Um, you could add a little bit of brown. The browns are really, really thick. see how that's extremely thick but we're going to just use the moisture that's in the brush here just to kind of thin it and then I'm going to do just a little bit on the outer and almost in a C formation just along what would be the bottom of that to create a shadow If you feel like you need more, go grab a little bit from where you pounced. Okay, then we're done with that one. Okay, and that was uh, CC 186 Burnt Sienna is what I used. The green was a 61, 161 green leaf. Okay, so you could either leave it like this or you can detail it with black. I tend to detail, it looks beautiful like this. 
Oh, there is one other thing we need to do. We want to, I want to do uh, in the background here, I want to do okay. some, so I do want something around here to kind of frame it. Um, you could do dots if you don't do brushwork, uh, brush stroke type things. Um, what I'm going to do is use the orchid bloom that we put in this background. Let me scoot out a little bit there. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to tip into uh, the deep cranberry. So I'm going to fully load. And this is like a three or, f excuse me, four round. And then tip into that deep cranberry. Okay. And I'm just going to pull in some comma strokes to frame this. And I'm going to go with the flow of the, so press, pull, and lift to a point. Fully load. Tip. This one I'm going to press, pull, and lift this direction. So it's just allowing me to frame that area. And I'm not rinsing my brush in between. I'm just going back and fully loading. Press pull and lift, comma stroke. Fully load, tip. go this way. <coughs> Excuse me. Keeping in mind what direction I'm going. Because I've got two different types of products. One is thin, one's thicker. It does uh, create a little bit of an issue. I should have thinned this deep cranberry down a little bit more than what I did. Okay, this one should go this way. And I'm not worrying about those other leaves or anything. It's okay. Now you've got little itty bitty spaces down here. So you're going to have to be careful. And I'm going to bring this one out a little ways from it. And maybe just put a little dark area there. Okay. All right, that made a nice frame. You could add dots. I mean, there's so many different things that you could do with it. Um, I do want to put um, some lines in my background. And I'm going to do that with white. Clean that out. And this is a white color stroke CS602. And I'm just going to use uh, that same liner brush. I don't think I have a different one over here. Nope. Okay. So, this is pretty thin, so you really don't need to thin this at all. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just start like over here, and I'm going to just kind of give it a little bit of a wave. It's really not even going to show up that much until it starts to dry.
but this will kind of uh, give it almost like a wrapping paper, wallpaper type look to it. So just a little bit of a wave. Okay, now what I'm gonna do though, I'm gonna turn this and that's hard to see. As it starts to dry, you'll be able to see it. Um, this one over here, I'm gonna start from down here and then stop at that leaf and then restart. And I'm just giving it a little bit of a wave these lines are about um, half an inch or so apart really depends on how big of a surface you're working on and then you can either take a ruler or you can kind of eyeball you know I've got one down here so I want to make it, but it's pretty much a half an inch. Like I said, you can kind of visualize. Okay. Let's do one right on the very edge here. And then if you feel like, okay, maybe there should be a little one right there because of lining it up with the one down there, you can do that too. Okay, so if I tilt that, you can kind of see those lines. You can also see, um, you can feel the product is thicker on there. Now I'll probably put two coats on these lines to make sure they uh, show up enough. So you would want to do this before you outline just in case anything you're outlining. I had tendency to add little curls and different things so I want this to be underneath so you can just quickly add that second coat on there. Didn't take very long. Turn it around. Constantly reloading to keep that color strong. It's white, you're trying to cover a color up. So let's detail. We're going to take black and it's one of those just put out a little tiny dot and once again we're going to thin it with a couple of brush loads of water.
pulling it through that to get a nice point. I like to loosely outline. Um, okay. And I'm going to leave those uh, little leaves or my shadow leaves, I'm going to leave those alone. I'm not going to touch those. So I'm just going to lightly, loosely. But it is going to kind of make things pop. Now you can either or. You've got your shading on your leaves um, because of doing the M stroke or the ripple stroke. But you can also put some side veins as long as you follow that pattern within your leaf. Don't vary off from that because it's going to show up and you're not going to like that. here kind of waving it and I am going to pull a few fine lines of black in there also every layer you add just um, increases the shadows how dark it is I'm keeping it very light, extremely light. And I'm not really following my line. I am, but I'm not being absolutely precise on it because you don't need to. But everybody outlines and details different. A little bit more water with my black. It all really um, depends on what you like. Okay, now I'm going to do this leaf while I'm over here. Constantly reloading. Okay, so I've got this little petal. I need to get a few lines in there. And then we're going to do this leaf. I like to curl the ends of my leaves. Okay, so let's do this petal. And you can do thick and thin lines. Um, that's nice also. They don't all have to be exactly the same. Press down with a little more pressure and you get the thicker lines. Okay, let's go up here. Okay, these leaves are just going to have a single vein. So even though they're smooth, just by gently waving your outline or doing a thick and thin, you can change the way they look. So watch thick and then out to thin. So you've just created a whole new look to that.
especially if uh, for some reason your brush you put too much pressure and you have a thick line then go back and make some thick and thin on some of the others so now this has got a bunch of those and I don't have any over here so I'm gonna go back and just add some to this just so that they're similar because otherwise your eye is drawn to this area and you're like hmm something's not right so if you just go back and add those, it's amazing how it can take you away from that area and make everything look good. So just by adding Doesn't have to be a lot, see, just a little bit. It's done. All right, let's go back to the petals here. I am going to have to go back and add a little thick and thin on some of my petals now that I did that. So I need to make it, it almost uh, creates almost like a little turn bag. one now you can anchor yourself with your pinky if you don't uh, sit it down in something that's wet so be aware work from one side to the other you need to figure out what works for you the best um, you may want to work from the center out guy and your little marks Okay, this one I need to kind of thicken that up there. You notice that I'm constantly turning my work pulling most of these strokes towards me. That's what tends to be more comfortable for those that are right-handed, I should say. Left-handers um, either push or go out to one side. So more pressure down makes that line fatter or larger. Remember color, pressure, and motion. So we have black on the brush. The amount of pressure is our thick and thin lines. And the motion, meaning the direction that we're pulling it, will create our lines.
Okay, so now we have to um, add a little bit to those centers. They need to have some kind of outlining or detailing. So a lot of times I'll just come in and make little tiny marks with my brush. Just tap, 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 tap. And then bring it in a little bit further. Maybe on that lower side. So you're just tapping in and kind of crossing over between the center and the petal. There again, you could use um, a stylus if you wanted to and actually make dots. Or like I'm doing and just using the tip of your liner brush. You're just framing that and then come in a little bit more on that lower side that has the, the brown on it. Okay, so let's frame this guy. Put a little bit there and then come in where that burnt sienna, that brown was at. Okay. Sometimes you got to look at it from a different uh, direction and maybe add some more from a different, you know, going from a different direction. It may just look better as I see it. Okay, so I think I want a couple of um, accent marks on some of my petals. So you can come in here and just... doesn't have to be on each one like creating a little fold uh, maybe it's even like that where it's kind of a little bit of a dip there okay you can sign um, I think I'll change and sign with a green so that it's not so stark. I still have some of that um, green leaf. So I'm going to thin some of it down. And I generally, depends on how you want to look like, look at this. I mean, it could lay like this, um, or it could be standing up the other direction, so you need to determine that before you sign. Um, I think I'm going to go upright like this, and I usually like to sign it. Um, well, I can't do that. Change my plan here. That's not going to work. Green on green will not show up, but I can put out some of the darker green, and it will. Okay, so I'm going to use the 162 and thin it down. So when you sign, um, you may even want to date it. Okay, let me pull that closer so you can see. You can see all the detail. That turned out very pretty. You could even go around the edge, um, you know, with a darker color if you wanted. We put the the wash on there. Depends on really what you're going to do with this. If you're going to make a trivet, if you're going to put it into a frame. Uh, but I hope you enjoyed this and I will glaze it 
and show you what it looks like finished. All right, thanks for joining me. Okay, I decided to um, add something else. So uh, I'm gonna take the deep cranberry, which is a burgundy color. I'm gonna thin it down for some line work. And I'm gonna add a couple of little um, lines on those comma strokes out there on the side. Okay, so depending on which direction they're going, let's start up here. Uh, so what I wanna do is, it's almost like an outline of it, but just let it curl and then maybe one or two little strokes. So I'm gonna do all of them that are in this direction Tilt it so that you can maybe see it better. Okay. Constantly turn. You don't have to do this. This is just, I wanted a little more definition on my border. So most certainly you wouldn't have to do this if you didn't want to. I just think it'll um, even out the balance of the colors within the design. So when you're designing something, you should have three levels of elements. So what we've got here is you've got your background, which is that watercolor look around the edge. Then you have your leaves would be next. And then your flower is your focal point. So I like to do things with three levels. Uh, that's just the way I look at things. Just to give you a little, t a little tip. All right, I think that is all of them. So that was a fun piece, didn't take that long, and hopefully that gives you um, some basics on how to paint um, flowers, leaves, background, detailing, and how to use your colors for earth products.